I never realized how alone I felt. Coping with physical or emotional pain can be so debilitating. And today, I finally got the courage to share with you part of my story. And for the first time, I want to talk about a topic that society has previously deemed a taboo, but more on that later. This all started a few weeks ago when I shared with you how I've been dealing with physical pain for the past 30 years due to an early onset of rheumatoid arthritis when I was 18. Sometimes the pain has been so debilitating that I have to sit and rest for a while. And it has always felt like life was just passing me by. I would get mad at myself because I wasn't being productive. But I realize now that for some people like me, that's the only way that our body can recuperate and heal. Many of you have mentioned how creativity helps you cope with your ailments. And it does for me too. But even some creative things cause me pain. Repetitive movements like ink blending sometimes cause me a lot of pain in my hands. And I don't have the strength to use a regular die cutting machine. That's why I have bought an electronic one instead. I used to take anti-inflammatory medication, but it harmed my body so much that I had to stop. Please know that I'm not qualified to give any medical advice, but I can only share my story and if you're dealing with chronic pain, it's best to seek medical advice as each one of us is different. Over the years, I have found a few things that have helped me, like following an anti-inflammatory diet or taking certain supplements, getting chiropractic treatment, but sometimes I get an acute flare-up and I need immediate relief, and that has been hard to deal with. One of the things I use is ointments to relieve some of the pain, or even ice packs to reduce inflammation. But earlier this year, I got contacted by a company called One Compress, and they offered to send me their compression gloves to try out. I told them that I can't promise any endorsement as I needed to try them out first. I knew from previous experience that I can't handle strong pressure on my joints as it makes the pain worse. When my knees or ankles would swell up, I would try to wear braces around them to help me walk, but sometimes the brace created more pain. So I was very doubtful about these gloves, but I decided to try them for a couple of months. What I discovered is that unlike other braces, these gloves apply gentle pressure and warmth, and using them actually helped alleviate some of the pain I felt in my hands. It's only temporary relief as it's not supposed to cure. As soon as I start feeling a little stiffness or pain, I put them on, even at night. You can even use them while you're creating, although I don't want to get them caked on with mixed media products. So as soon as I'm using wet mediums, I take them off. Don't know if you noticed, I have very short fingers. So I had to fold the top so my fingers would stick out properly. I also like that they covered my wrists as I can't bend my wrists due to a lot of scarring created over the years. It provides that gentle pressure there as well. Now here comes the part of my story I've never shared before, but I have linked the website for the gloves below in case you want to check them out. The truth is that I never realized how much anxiety and sadness my physical pain created over the years. It greatly affected my mental health because I was always in survival mode, trying to help my physical pain and partially neglecting my emotional pain. It wasn't until this year that I finally made the decision to see a therapist. I feel this topic has been such a taboo in our society, which stems from an old school thinking that used to make people feel that seeing a therapist must mean you're mentally ill or worse, crazy. But this is so far from the truth, as mental health has so many facets. As for me, I didn't think I needed a therapist because I thought I could deal with things on my own. After all, I had just physical ailments and I had other doctors looking after me. 
Looking back, I wish more people spoke about mental health. It would have saved me so much hardship because my therapist has helped me so far to deal with the event that for me started it all. Moving to Canada at age 15. Don't get me wrong, I feel my parents made a great decision moving here from Venezuela. But because I knew that, I suppressed my emotions as how can something that is so right feel so wrong? It might seem like an insignificant event as so many people move, but not everyone gets physically ill after a couple of years from harboring so much anger and pain. What I learned is that I'm a very sensitive person, both emotionally and with any change in my physical surroundings. And this major change affected my body more than I ever thought. Throughout the years, I found creativity to release my emotions. I learned to express myself in my art journal, the way some people write in their diaries. And that would help me to temporarily cope. But I realize now that it wasn't enough, as I needed professional help, something that probably would have benefited me at age 15. But at that time, it was more of a taboo. And I didn't want anyone to think I was crazy. During a few of my therapy sessions, I intuitively created in my art journal, and although my therapist is not an art therapist, we were able to talk about the art I had created and work through some of those emotions. I never realized how alone I felt at 15. Even though I was surrounded by family, I felt alone. And I depicted that in my journal. She helped me through those painful feelings, and after a few sessions, they dissipated into thin air. I still have a lot to work through, as my story doesn't end here. But therapy is really helping me, and I'm not embarrassed to say it. I needed help, and I seeked it, and that has made all the difference. But therapy is not for everyone, and not all therapies are a match for every person. So you need to find someone you connect with. And although I still have a lot of layers of life to work through, I am better physically and emotionally. I've learned how to take care of myself and I'm grateful every single day that I'm alive and that I can create. And although I still have fears, like not being able to use my hands to create, there are people who always inspire me, like my friend Claudia, who creates even though she's blind. You can learn all about her story and how she challenged me to create blindfolded in this video right here.